Reactions to the Convention on Biodiversity, Rio de Janeiro, 1992. In the past 50 years, there has been an unprecedented change in the world's ecosystems. Species are becoming extinct at a thousand times the rate of background extinctions due to habitat loss, overexploitation, nutrient logging, climate change, and invasive species. Biodiversity provides essential services such as food, water, fiber and medicine, and regulates soil erosion and purification of water and air. It is also a spiritual connection between humans and nature. Conserving biodiversity has proven to be a difficult task, as the well-integrated practices of humankind have had astronomically adverse effects on the environment. Though uncertainty exists over the rate of biodiversity loss, many scientists are concerned with the rapid rate of habitat destruction and are eager to see a change in the conservation regime. Biodiversity is essential to development. All people have equal rights to benefit from its conservation and sustainable use. The first official step towards conservation of biodiversity came with the Convention on Biological Diversity CBD, which brought together heads of state for the common inevitable future of humankind. There were many different reactions to the CBD, two of which will be examined specifically. The first is the difference in ratification of the Convention by the United Kingdom and the United States, and the second is the objection of constraints imposed by the Convention onto the scientific academia. Convention on Biological Diversity The Convention on Biological Diversity was signed in 1992 at the first Earth Summit held in Rio de Janeiro. The convention became ratified in 1993 by 193 countries excluding the United States. Since then, the initiative has expanded to include the Conferences of the Parties COPs, the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, and the National Biodiversity Strategies and Actions Plan. The main objectives of the Convention are the conservation of biodiversity, the sustainable use of its components, and the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from genetic resources. Some indicators for progress were assigned as changes in status of threatened species, trends in abundance and distribution of selected species, and coverage of protected areas. Among the 12 practices drafted by the COP, seeking relevant information from scientific and indigenous knowledge required the involvement of all relevant sectors of society. The protection and use of living modified organisms, or LMOs, resulting from modern biotechnological advances was the subject of the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety in 2000. The objective was to ensure an adequate level of protection in the field of the safe transfer, handling, and use of LMOs that might have adverse effects on the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity, when risks to human health were involved. In order to elevate the issue of biodiversity loss nearer to the top of political agenda, the UN declared 2010 as the International Year of Biodiversity, which correlated with the 2010 biodiversity targets set out by COP. Cooperation on the CBD. There were many different reactions to the convention, most notably the differences between the United States and the United Kingdom. Both countries took very different stances in the negotiations and after, despite being advanced industrial democracies, host to international financial centers and major transnational corporations. The United States was instrumental to getting the CBD negotiations started, but after the scope of the convention expanded, the Bush administration was reluctant to sign. Yielding to the pressures of many American businesses and internal contracts, Bush stated that while the United States had a long history of environmental protection, ratifying the CBD would strengthen the Endangered Species Act and was a clear threat to American jobs. The Clinton administration reversed this decision in 1993 and signed the CBD, but it has yet to be ratified in the United States. On the opposite spectrum, ratification by the United Kingdom was rapid, debate was minimal and quite unlike the process in the United States. The UK supported much of the conservation commitments under discussion at the CBD. Many political analysts have extensively documented the differences in structures and styles of environmental regulation in both countries, noting that in the United States, proceedings are often very court-like and adversarial, while in the United Kingdom, they are constrained to private industry and have relatively little litigation. It is further argued that federalism versus unitarism is a core institutional variation between the two countries that led to the different reactions to the CBD. Concerns over the CBD The Convention stipulates that sovereign rights of state have authority over their own natural resources and are encouraged to carry out scientific research. 
The third main objective of the CBD is to regulate access to genetic resources and the fair and equitable benefit sharing resulting from the utilization of biodiversity, or ABS. Academia is a major generator of knowledge for achieving CBD's goals, yet it is underrepresented in proceedings and negotiations, even though it is an important stakeholder regarding access to genetic resources. The purpose for including this article in the convention was to deal with the so-called bioprospecting of species by pharmaceutical companies for commercial intent. However, it has had grave consequences for the realm of academia. Scientists argue that ABS was originally conceived for commercial research, but also applies to academic research, research that has no intention to commercialize its results or to develop marketable products. It is difficult to meet the requirements of academic non-commercial research as the ABS system has been implemented in numerous countries that provide genetic resources for study. The system generates administrative burdens and delays that restrict researchers, consequently deterring scientists from conducting research on genetic resources, a necessity for the continued monitoring of biodiversity required by the convention. Though it is necessary to have measures protecting against the misuse of genetic resources, the convention hampers non-commercial research and reduces the benefits of knowledge provided by academia. Failure of the CBD Despite being ratified by 193 countries, the CBD has ultimately failed to reach its 2010 biodiversity targets. Many argue that this is because its scope is vast and commitments are not quantified. Targets have not been achieved because goals are too vague and difficult to measure. Others argue that the convention is framed negatively extremely vague on timescales, baselines, acceptable rates, and measures. Furthermore, it has become apparent that the effects of climate change have accelerated biodiversity loss, and it is now a necessity to tackle these two problems together. By slowing human impacts, the ecosystems are given time to adjust to the effects of climate change. The Convention was a stable beginning for the reduction of biodiversity loss. Even though it did not achieve its 2010 biodiversity targets, it significantly changed the outlook on biodiversity by international policymakers. The need for conservation of biodiversity is a necessity in light of climate change and habitat destruction. The ultimate conclusion is that the inertia of the system ensures that biodiversity loss will continue regardless of present-day decisions and conventions. The legacy of the recent past has yet to be realized.